Hello and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we will continue with the simulation series and in this particular tutorial, we would be modeling a pipe in Aspen Isis. So it's just a continuation of what we have done in the past uh, for our simulation. So we are just going to attach a pipe to this particular model, right? So um, yeah, so from the model palette, um from the model palette you have the piping you have the piping and hydraulics section so from that section you have the uh, mixer you have the t you have the pipe segment you have the gas pipe you have the aspen hydraulics and a couple of other things there so we'll be making use of the pipe segments right so if you want to model a pipe whether a gas pipe or a liquid pipe a pipe that contains that liquid is flowing through you can use the pipe segment right pipe segment so you just click on it and you place it on your flow sheet right yes so basically that's it um so um you can attach your material streams to it for example if i attach this um i'll attach this um outlet stream then the inlet stream can be the bottom of our distillation column, right? The distillation column we modeled in the in the last tutorial. So um yeah. So for pipes, pipes actually require energy streams, right? They require energy streams, and this is because um as the fluid is flowing through the pipe, there will probably be heat interactions with the um, environment right so as the fluid is flowing through the pipe there will be heat interactions with the environment so heat will be either lost or gained so you need to specify an energy stream for that right so let's say we have q4 as the energy stream right so step one you attach your material streams step two you attach your energy stream then after that the next step is to um, create a pipe segment right so you create a pipe segment so for example you could have a single segment in a pipe or you could have multiple segments so in those segments you would have um, you have a section where you can actually specify their properties right so each of those um, segments will have properties such as the um, the diameter yes the diameter the elevation etc right so um let me see okay yeah so to specify the segment to specify a pipe segment you can actually do that under the ratings tab so you click on ratings tab after you have connected your streams you click on ratings tab and then uh, you click on append segment right you click on append segment so when you click append se segment for the first time it creates a single segment right so but if your pipe has multiple segments then you have to click on it multiple times so you can click on either append append segment or insert segment right so it inserts more segments to that particular pipe right so now in each segment you are expected to specify the properties of that particular segment such as the pipe length the elevation the outer diameter inner diameter the material of construction right the roughness pipe wall conductivity etc right so some of the parameters can be left with their default values that is if you don't have um if you don't have um uh, values for those right you can actually leave them in their default values but if you have then you can actually change to your desired values right so basically this is where you specify the um the characteristics of a particular pipe segment right so um we are just um sim we are simulating a single a segmented pipe right a pipe with only one segment and this is the um data we have for that so we have the length we have the length and then 
we have details for the nominal diameter so we have length is um 65 so we can enter the length so length is 65 meters yes 65 meters let's see yes so length is 65 meters then we have nominal diameter we have schedule 40 and then 300 mm so to enter the schedule uh, yeah we can just double click on you can either double click on outer diameter right you can either double click on outer diameter or you click on view segment right so for a particular segment that is highlighted you, you first have to highlight it actually so when it's highlighted in case of you having multiple segments you have to highlight that particular segment and click on view segment right so when you click on view segment you are able to specify the nominal diameter of that particular segment right or you can just double click on this and it takes you there right so either you double click or you click on view segment right so either one of them actually works so in this case we are making use of um schedule 40 yes then schedule 40 with um 300 um millimeter right so schedule 40 300 millimeter then we can move to the next specification so based on that we have specified what we have as regards the segment so the next step after specifying the segment characteristics is to specify the um, heat heat transfer details right the heat transfer details so that is also found in the rating tab so you can find both the sizing and the heat transfer um, sections in the ratings tab so after design you have rating right so you can actually find it there so what you need to do is click on heat transfer using the drop down you click on heat transfer and then you specify your desired details right so in this case you have um, pipe inner wall inner HTC outer HTC not insulated right um, so we can actually specify those um, let's see uh, okay so we are going to be using uh, yes we are going to be using this um the estimate htc right so based on what we have there it says inner htc outer htc and not insulated right so since it is not insulated we will not be checking this insulation um box right so it says include pipe wall right from here pipe wall is included from this table pipe wall is included then inner htc as well then outer htc i guess right so outer htc also then what else um not insulated so since it's not insulated we will not click on include insulation right because it is not insulated then we have default medium is ground um let me see if we can specify that somewhere okay yes so the ambient medium is ground so we can actually leave these parameters the way they are so after specifying the heat transfer um details the next thing is to specify the um ambient temperature the ambient temperature is um, 36 from what we have here the ambient temperature is 36 degrees celsius so we can also specify that ambient temperature yes so once specify ambient temperature and your heat transfer information then your pipe should solve right should actually solve so that's basically how to model pipes like the basic way of modeling pipes right under the design tab you have um you have parameters right and in the parameter section you have different um, pipe flow correlations that you can actually choose from so maybe if you want to model your pipe you can do some research about the different um, popular pipe flow correlations you have the bags and brill you have the um, 
Grigory Aziz Mandane, you have the HTFS, you have Olga 3P and 2P, you have the Tulsa Unified model. So this um these um correlations actually um they actually use for different um scenarios, right? So you need to do some research about them in order to choose which one best fits your model, right? So that's it for the um that's it for the parameters. Then um after um after uh modeling your pipe after you model your pipe you could actually um, check the performance so we have the performance tab here we have the performance tab here under this um, performance tab you can see a table for distance that is length of pipe right based on the number of segments you have so you have length of pipe and then you have elevation right and then you can um, click on view profile you can click on view profile right view profile so under view profile you have different kind of tables here yeah? uh, you have different tables here and also different plots as well right so you have length of pipe you have elevation you have pressure you have total pressure drop you have temperature you have temperature across the pipe you have vapor fraction you have heat transferred you have a lot of um, parameters that are generated based on the data you have given for that particular pipe model right so and then based on this table the software also generates different kind of plots you have different plots here based on the table generated so if you give um, a more detailed information about the pipe model it's actually going to generate a lot of plots for you in this particular section right so you could actually um, generate plots for your pipe from this um, plot section within the pipe and you can find it like i said you can find it under the um, performance tab right under the performance tab so that's where you find that so basically that's what you can actually get from modeling a basic um, pipeline right so that's it that's actually it for um, the basics of pipeline modeling right so uh, pipeline modeling can actually be more complex than that so hopefully we'll be looking at more complex pipe models in subsequent tutorials right so this is just um, part of the simulation series that helps you understand the basics of modeling some of these um, popular equipment right so this is still part of the basics so in subsequent tutorials we would actually learn um, detailed pipe modeling right yes Having modeled this particular pipe segment, uh, we have come to the end of this particular tutorial. So if you have any questions on pipe modeling, you can actually um, let me know through the comment section. Then like this video and share with your friends. Also subscribe to this channel if you have not done so yet in order to gain um, notifications on subsequent videos about process modeling thank you for joining me in this particular tutorial do have a great day